week, Hollywood was preparing to celebrate with the release of some of the major summer blockbusters. And while the movies are still coming out, the industry is shut down. Actors and writers are heading back to the picket lines in Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, even Hawaii for the first full week of their joint strike. There were no new negotiations this weekend. The guilds say they are demanding a living wage and protections from AI. But some industry heads gave this bleak outlook on the strike. These conditions will potentially produce a, a, an absolute collapse of an entire industry. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. And they are adding to a set of challenges that this business is already facing that is, quite frankly, very disruptive. So they're not being realistic? Uh, no, they're not. Let's bring in MSNBC's Lindsay Reiser at one of the picket lines in New York and entertainment journalist Kim Serafin. So, Lindsay, you are out there with these actors, these writers. What's going on there this morning? What are you hearing? I mean, it is loud, Anna. It is hot and it is humid. And people are out here for however long it takes. I mean, I've been hearing honks as cars drive by. We're right outside 30 Rock, just a few floors down from you, Anna. And we're seeing some support from cars driving by. We're hearing chants like, when I say AI, you say bye-bye. And so that brings me to some of the sticking points here. They want the studios to address the use of AI, the use of their likeness. They want a livable wage, and they want to address... Uh, those residuals, which really have gone by the wayside with the advent of streaming. And so I want to go ahead and bring in a Jolie Fisher. She's a working actress. She's also the secretary treasurer for SAG-AFTRA. So Jolie, do we have any negotiating schedule on the table? What happens next? This is so emotional for me. I am a 40-year union member. I'm the secretary treasurer of the union, and I'm part of the negotiating team. It has been 35 days. It has been the W&W &W process, where we listen to the hopes, the fears, the dreams, the wishes of of 160,000 people and we care about every category in this union and we went to the table in good faith and sat there for 35 days and talked about the needs of this union. How long is this going to take, Jolie? We're in it for the long haul. Do you hear the passion of these people? Do we stood beside the WGA, our siblings in the WGA? We are here. We are strong. We are not going anywhere until they invite us back in. It's up to them. And you are not only talking to us as a member of the negotiating group here, but you're also talking to us as a working actress, people can see you in Ellen and in Inspector Gadget and in Until Death. And so what what is it like for you as an actor in this industry? I got involved in union service uh, in the early 2000s. I went away to raise children, but I came back in because I saw the need in 2020 when our contracts eroded and evaporated. And I thought, this is, I got to get back in there. I've been working three years and, and, and day in and day out, and I didn't make my insurance this year because of my dedication to service and because of what happened in, in this terrible thing that we all, hopefully you survived, the pandemic. We all got to the end of Netflix. We all watched all these programs. We're the storytellers. We want to be involved. We want to see what ourselves represented on the screen, and I'm just... I'm just inspired by everybody. Jolie, thank you so much. And I want to read you guys a little bit of this statement. We haven't heard anything new from the uh, union that's uh, the association representing the studio heads, which NBC Universal is a part of. But last week they said, this is the union's choice, not ours. Rather than continuing to negotiate, SAG-AFTRA has put us on a course that will deepen the financial hardship for thousands who depend on the industry for their livelihoods. Anna? Lindsay Reiser, thank you for bringing us all of that. So, Kim, the Milliken Institute estimates that this Hollywood shutdown could cost the economy $4 billion. Huge, huge numbers. What's at stake here? Yeah, well, we're not even just talking about, obviously, productions and actors and that industry. I mean, it's everyone involved. It's the caterers, because you think about even the premieres that have been canceled. So halls that host premieres, um, production houses. I mean, everyone is affected, especially in Hollywood. I mean, especially in L.A., this is taking a huge toll. But I mean, for everyone that has anything to do with the entertainment industry, this is taking a toll on them. And so we talk about some of the demands or the asks what they want higher wages, some protections when it comes to AI. We just played the clip from Bob Iger, Disney CEO, saying that their demands are just not realistic. Well, think about that as I pull up this CNBC article from earlier in the month, or I guess it was last month, highlighting that his peer David Zaslav at Warner Brothers Discovery made 384 times as much as the average writer in the last five years. I mean, they're, they're saying nearly 
half a billion dollars was his salary and his his income. So are these demands not realistic from writers and actors? You know, you just played those clips and you see how far apart the sides are. I mean, th there's one side saying we can't do it. There's one side saying you need to do this. Now, the AMPTP is saying we have these historic pay raises that we put in where they're saying they put in these protections for AI because that's such a big issue. But the actors are saying that's not enough because AI is changing the industry. Residuals are changing the industry in terms of streaming. I mean, a lot of actors, like you were just hearing Jolie Fisher saying, you survive on residuals between jobs. And actors can't do that anymore because the streaming has changed everything in so many ways. We're talking about a, a changing industry. I don't think anyone disagrees that this is a changing industry, but it's just how we address that and how we can protect actors and have the kind of entertainment that people want. And people aren't going to see changes right away. I should say that. You're not going to see the, you're not going to notice anything on TV because a lot of the streamers have stocked up on programming, so that will last throughout the fall. The summer blockbusters are already Ex in the can. Exactly. And, and the actors are not allowed to do publicity or promotion, but a lot of the the press tours have already been done, like for Barbie and Oppenheimer. Tom Cruise was doing a lot of press for Mission Impossible. That's all done. What you're going to notice maybe in the fall TV season, because you're going to start seeing repeats of some sitcoms. You'll see a lot of reality shows. Always was going to be reality on the fall TV schedule, but there's going to be more. Um, but you're not going to see maybe fall, t uh, fall film festivals. That's a big one. Toronto, um, Telluride, Venice. Mm. Normally you have actors showing up to those. Not going to see those. Okay. So we don't know. We'll have to find out. Yeah, it depends on how long it goes. And, and it, people are saying this could go into the fall. Okay, we'll maybe see. Longer.